Herbie's going to go up the mast as he always does before a uh, voyage. So he's putting on sunscreen and he's going to be doing what? Yeah, so first off, I'm doing a full rig inspection from the masthead all the way down to the bottom. Check everything. And that's a standard that we do every time we head offshore. So you guys are going to be traveling up the mast with Herbie as he does all these things. Okay, so we're at our first inspection point. So to keep me here, I just pull up some tail on my gat line and then just tie a knot in it. And that uh that takes the tension off. <clears throat> ah, off of my harness so I can breathe a little easier. So nothing fancy. Just tie it off and it keeps it there. And then I can let go and take a look. So here I'm just checking all the toggle, checking for any chafe. Any wear, any signs of cracks. All that good stuff. So if you guys are wondering how our synthetic rigging that attaches to the mast. This is the system. You have the synthetic stay comes up. It goes to a little thimble, which goes to a toggle, which goes to the tang, which is then bolted through the mast. So it goes stay to toggle, to tang, to the mast. And if you look, you can see this bolt pops out the other side. That's through bolted through the mast with a nice big compression post that runs through it. Sorry about the shakiness. It's actually really, really rolly in here. So uh, it just makes it extra fun. All right, so we got that. That is good. The lowers are all looking good. So our head stay. This is service to keep it protected from chafe from the head of the sail, which is one of the highest chafing points. And then we have a thimble to a toggle that's made out of bronze, to a stainless steel tang, to the truck. And that is how our head sail hooks on, or, or the head stay hooks on. The back stays the same, but just on the back of the mast. So you have the stay that goes to the clevis pin with the thimble on the ice place, goes to a tang, goes to the mast. That's it. <laughs> So everything up here is looking good. So we're gonna start making our way down. You've seen me go up the mast, but what was I looking at? When you're doing a rig inspection at the bottom, that's always where you start because what if the mast is about to fall down and then you go up it and then it falls down. You don't go up a mast unless you're sure it's not gonna fall down while you're on it. So you start at the bottom and you look at the bottom of the stays where they attach to the boat. You want to check first the chain plates out there. Are they cracked? If they're cracked, you're done. Like the boat's got a lot bigger issues than checking the rigging today because it now needs new chain plates. So you check the chain plates to see if they're cracked. Then you're going to look at the stay where it attaches to this chain plate. So you have a turnbuckle and you want to see is the turnbuckle corroded? Is it cracked? Is there just rust spewing out of the thing? All these little issues, you want to check for those. Then, if you're like us, you have a dead eye instead of a turnbuckle, so you want to check for chafe. It's pretty straightforward. Now, you then have where the stay attaches to the turnbuckle. Now, if you have wire rigging, you're going to have a wire that comes down into something that grabs it. And that something is either a compression fitting, it's going to be kind of big and fat, or a swatched fitting, it's going to be really narrow. That's it. That's really all you have to know at this point. So what you're looking for on these is the stay comes down and then the terminator holds on to the stay, right? Now, the stay is like this and it the bottom, the terminator, is an open cup facing up. So salt water, wind, dirt, just 
all sorts of muck is going to get down in there and it's going to corrode and when it corrodes it's going to expand and when it expands it's going to pop just like that and your terminator at the bottom is going to have these little vertical cracks in it and they can be tiny i mean like tiny but if you see them it's cracked you can't sail anymore the rigging's done you've got to replace the rigging so that's at the bottom then you have the stay itself so where the stay goes into the terminator you want to check right there because that's a flex point and that is where the wires can break and if you see a broken wire so you have 19 wires that run if you see one of them that's just you know popped up it's done your rigging's broken it's got to be replaced the other things you want to check for are does the cable the the 19 strands that you see which sadly you can only see the outer strands there's seven inside that you can't see fun the outer 12 strands that you see are they all the same shininess so they're all stainless steel it can be 304 316 316l that's great are they all uniform if they all look the same shininess you're good it's a new stay the wires fine everything's great if one of them is more corroded than the other so it looks like a little darker a little grayer it just doesn't shine the same as the others it's going if you see one of them is like pitted or has like little like jagged lines running horizontally across the stay going up that means that wire has been overstressed and it's going so all of these things mean rigging needs to be replaced now you get up to the top of the stay where the stay meets the mast you have I'm going to start at the mast side and work our way down so you have the mast and then you have that tang where the tang attaches to the mast you have stainless steel of the tang attaching to aluminum of the mast because aluminum masts are the most common masts that you'll come across yes there are carbon fiber masts and yes there are wooden masts but most boats it's going to be aluminum spar so you have an aluminum spar and then a piece of stainless steel attaching to it and when you put stainless steel and aluminum together they are dissimilar metals and you will get galvanic corrosion and it will manifest in two forms one is this white powder that's just like going everywhere and it's really bad that means that your mast is dying and you've got some big problems the other is these little bubbles that just like form in the paint and they're just like popping up around the stainless steel thing that's going into the aluminum mast that means that you're about to get the powder that just goes everywhere and just gets on everything and it literally means that your mast is turning into aluminum oxide dust not good not good it's very bad so if you don't have that good now you're looking at the tang and how it attaches to the stay now it should not attach directly because there should be a toggle and the reason is the tang is like a fork and then the stay comes up and attaches to it and this means that your stay can rotate on this axis because you have a clevis pin running like this to be the axle you're good that's great you can rotate everyone loves rotation now the problem is on a sailboat things don't just rotate fore aft they also go like this and when you take a very rigid piece of stainless steel and you put it into another very rigid piece of stainless steel and you turn them in a way that they cannot rotate they will crack so you're checking for at the top is there little horizontal cracks in the eye because that's that's what's going to happen if you have the toggle now you have the toggle that will rotate this way and then where the toggle attaches to the stay it can rotate this way so now you have a universal joint so you won't get those forces and then you won't get those cracks but that doesn't mean that you're done that means that you have an extra part that can crack and can corrode and can have all sorts of problems so you have to check the toggle and make sure the toggle is doing well now toggles come in stainless steel and stainless steel suffers from crevice corrosion so you need to check for these little teeny tiny crack lines on it if you have the alternative is a bronze toggle bronze will not suffer from crevice corrosion so you don't have to worry about that but bronze is a little softer and if it's overloaded it will deform which is great because if you see that your toggle is kind of like weirdly shaped it doesn't look like it used to it means you overloaded it it didn't break but it does need to be replaced so you just replace it and that's it it's not a big deal that is how you check that stuff now that's all for steel if you have synthetic rigging at the top you're checking for chafe 
and then you have the tang and all that part that is metal, so you have to check, you know, for corrosions there. But that's, that's generally it. So you want to check each point. So you're going to check the lowers. Then you're going to go up just a smidge above the lowers to the first spreader. And you want to check the spreader base where it attaches to the mast. For galvanic corrosion, because you have an aluminum spreader coming to a stainless steel bracket to an aluminum mast. So a couple areas, want to check that there's no galvanic corrosion. You want to check the tips of the spreaders and make sure they are properly seized to the cap shroud. Because if they are not seized to the shrouds, then the spreader tip can slide up or slide down. Either case, the spreader buckles and then the stay comes in and then, worst case, your mask comes down. Then you want to move up and you're going to keep going up until you finally get to the next set of shrouds, which can be check stays and the inner force stay if you're a cutter or running back stays. Or if you're a multi-spreader rig, the next set of spreaders and you have the intermediates. You just want to check everything on the way up. Now. You get to the tippy top. Now you have the head stay and the back stay and the cap shrouds attaching. Same thing. Crevice corrosion, chafe if you're synthetic, and galvanic corrosion. Those are the things you want to be checking for. Now, you also want to check all on all these guys the cotter pin and clevis pins. So, a clevis pin is that big rod looking thing that goes in. And you want to make sure that it first has a cotter pin. That's the important thing. Cotter pins can fall out. If they fall out, you want to put a new one in. The second thing you want to check is to make sure that the clevis pin is set with the head up. So the stay comes in at an angle. You put the clevis pin from the top. So if the cotter pin falls out, gravity will hold it in. If you put the clevis pin this way, then you put the cotter pin up here. If the cotter pin falls out, it falls out. So it's bad. So you always want to make sure that the head of the clevis pin is up. Then you want to make sure that the head of the cotter pin is up, because if the cotter pin's legs break, well, gravity will keep the head in so it doesn't fall out and then you're not at the, you know, no cotter pin phase. Now, with the legs of a cotter pin, you want to spread them 15 degrees, just a little bit. You don't want to, like, wrench them out there, because when you do that, you will create stress in the metal and then the leg can actually just break off. And then the cotter pin can fall out, and then the clevis pin can fall out, and then your mask can fall down. So, these are all bad things. So, you just want to check all these guys all the way up to the top. Now, I personally check on my way up, I get to the top, I check everything, and then I check on my way back down. Now, while you're checking, you want to take a good quality digital camera with you. And this can be your cell phone. Because what's going to happen is you're looking at it, and... You're like, oh, this is good, this is good, this one's bad, this one's good, this one's good, this one's bad, like that. You get down to the bottom, you don't remember which one it was. And then later on you'll be like, was it good? I, I, I can't remember. It, there were so many things I saw today, and I was really high up, and I was scared, and like seagulls were attacking me, and like, what? Ah, so that's where you pull out your phone, and you can look at the pictures you took, and... And, important thing, you can enlarge the photos and look at them very closely. So you want to get good pictures with the flash. Even if it's a bright sunny day, turn your flash on because it'll just like bounce off the metal. And those little tiny crevice corrosion lines will just like show up. They're, they're a little easier to see if you took a flash photo. So, when you take your pictures, it's really important that you take two pictures of each thing. One far away, and one right at the object. And the reason is, if you take a picture of a broken piece of rigging, which one was it? Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> it's, which one? So, if you take a far away picture, then you know what area of the mast you're on, and then when you get your close-up picture, then you know which one you're looking at. So, Far away, then close. The close-up is the one that's showing you what's wrong, what's good, what's bad, what's going on. The far away just lets you know where on the mast you were when you took that picture. So, you can get all your pictures, you can check for you know corrosion, all that stuff. At the top of the mast, you want to check your lights. If you know bulbs burned out, you might want to switch it out. If you're switching out a bulb, maybe put in an LED because... I mean, they draw no power, they last a lot longer, they're really cool. I mean, 
I personally, we're, we're all LED on the boat, which is why we can run for hours and just never worry about turning on for on a light. It's just the, the lights are on. And honestly, it's kind of bad. Since the lights don't really draw any amperage, we just leave the lights on all the time. We leave shore, we turn on the nav lights, and then a month will go by, and then we find shore again, and then we turn them off because we're in port now. And then the same with the anchor light. When we're anchored, we just leave the anchor light on. Day, night, doesn't matter. The thing draws like a tenth of an amp. So if we go to shore and it's noon and then, you know, something really interesting is going on and then we have dinner and then, oh, <laughs> the sun went down, it doesn't matter. The anchor light's already on, so it's, it's not a problem. So that's just a, a little tidbit while you're up there. If you don't have LEDs, maybe consider putting them in. Uh, you want to check your wind instruments, your wires. Birds will do weird things to your boat, so make sure there's no nests up there. Uh, if you notice, in our videos, we never turn on our spreader lights, and we have two spreader lights up there. Birds ate the wires. They just picked them apart, ate those wires. They no longer turn on because there is no wire. Yeah, birds, birds. They're just <sighs> birds. So, while you're up there, check all these things. Make sure everything is good and sound. It doesn't have to be clean. If there's algae on the underside of your spreader, who cares? If there's a little dirt here or there, who cares? Just make sure that structurally it's good to go. You don't want anything fouling anything, getting in the way. If there's a bee's nest or a wasp nest, that's something you really don't want up there. Uh, but if you do find an insect nest, do not just take something like a screwdriver and like just try and knock it out because what if there's bees or wasps in there and now you're stuck up there and you can't get away? It's, it's a really bad thing, so do not do that. If you see a nest up there, take a picture of it, come down, get the proper things for dealing with that, and then go up and properly deal with that. But don't just like poke at it and see what happens. But if you do, send me the picture of your face because it's going to be funny with all the welts that you're going to have. So... Yeah, uh, yeah. so that's pretty much it. You're just checking. Bottom up, and then from the top, check them on your way back down. Because while you're going up, you get tired, you get, you know, out of shape, and then you're tired, and you're winded, and just... You might look and be like, yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, yep, that's fine. But on your way back down, you're a little more relaxed, because you're just lowering yourself. You're not pulling yourself up so that's a thing so that is what you're checking for on your way up and then on your way back down so take your pictures check for corrosion make sure everything is good and then you're done that is a rig inspection so i hope you found this video informative and maybe shed some light on the mysteries of rigging you know bring it out of the shadows a little Rigging is really not that complicated. It's just honestly people don't want to look at it because they don't want to find anything wrong. It's, it's funny. Uh, it, it's like, so my other job is I'm a dentist and it's so weird because people, when I check their teeth and I tell them, yep, no cavities, everything's good, they always say, thank you. I, I didn't choose to give them cavities or not give them cavities. Like, it's not like I'm sitting there I'm like, hmm. You've been bad, you didn't brush your teeth, I give you a cavity. Like, it's, that's not how it goes. It's the same with your rigging. It's not like, you know, you don't sail enough so your rigging's gonna smite you and, like, break. Like, it's, that's not how it goes. It's, you, you have to look at these things. And the more you look at them, the more you'll understand them and, and they won't be such a mystery. And the other thing is, if you look at them and check them, you'll catch things while they're small before they, like, completely break. And... The repair is literally like, oh, this this little tiny part, it broke, so I'm just going to, like, change that little tiny part. We're done. If you just leave it until the stay breaks and your mask comes down, well, now you got a much bigger bill. So, check things, look at them, look at them often. The more you look at them, the less mysterious they're going to be, and the more you're going to familiarize yourself with your boat and how your boat is set up and how things should be. And if anything ever changes... You'll notice it right away because you always check it. It's like if you have a dog and you always, you know, you like, you scratch his ears. And then like one day he's missing his ear. Well, you're going to notice it because when you go to scratch his ear, it's not there. It's obvious. Well, if you never look at your dog, 
and you never pet your dog, you'll never know that he's missing an ear. Yes, that makes perfect sense, and I'm sticking with it. So I hope you liked this video, you found it informative, and if you'd like to subscribe, we'd greatly appreciate it. We are currently sailing all over the place with our synthetic rigging, and we check it often because we rely on it completely because we have an electric motor. So if our rigging were to fail, we can't just be like, oh, eh, guess we're not sailing. We'll just motor, you know, that way, you know, forever. Just go. We, we can't. So our, our electric motor is just for marinas, like when we're docking, because sculling oars are kind of uh, a pain to use. I don't like using our sculling oar. I'd rather just, you know, turn a key and push a little lever and, you know, steer like a boat. But otherwise, we completely rely on our rigging to get us for like thousands of miles. We go really far. Uh, if you'd like to see, you know, the cool places we go with our synthetic rigging, check us out. Check out the other videos. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.